Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM and I am here today with our special guest, Natalie Grant, who has a brand new album coming out this week. Hi Natalie, how are you? Hi, how are you? You're doing great. How is the family surviving quarantine and COVID and all of the fun uh, 2020? Well, we're all surviving better now because my children got to all go back to school in oh. person. <laughs> so I was like, look at we're going to make it after all. <laughs> oh, but we're doing good. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Um, and 2020 has had its bad down parts, but you know, you can find joy in any situation and right. I'm able to do that. So it's been, yes. it's been a good year for me and not great for some friends, but you know, God yeah. is opening doors and, and moving people where they need to go. So. Yeah, it's amazing how we say so easily, right? Mm -hmm. Choose joy. Like yeah. that's been on a mug I've had. It's been on a t-shirt I've had. It's like, oh, choose joy sounds great until you actually have to. Right. <laughs> so like, oh, wait, I actually have to choose it. And I think 2020, there's never been a greater season to yeah. do that. <laughs> it's, it's so easy to kind of wallow in the mess of 2020. Um, yes. Without trying really hard to find those god winks that god sends to us all the time totally absolutely <laughs> and you and your husband have been entertaining all of us with worship nights on facebook and, and we appreciate that thank you so much uh, uh, it's been a privilege honestly it's been the greatest kind of blessing on his, that we it was unexpected um if i'm honest i think it was back march oh goodness it was two days after our like quarantine quarantine started in Nashville um where we live and um you know we were kind of sitting around like well so now what um and we're like you know what let's just do a song let's let's not we don't need to talk we don't need to be like hey everyone we don't have a professional setup it was pretty much like we don't have a microphone. We just have a iPhone and a piano. Let's just do a song. And I think I even accidentally hashtagged it, hashtagged it a song a day keeps the crazies away. <laughs> and it wasn't intentional. And then people were like, wait, are you going to do this every day? And we went, oh, well, I mean, we probably could. I mean, how long is this going to be? Like 14 days, you know, probably. Right. <laughs> and then it was like 70 songs later or whatever. Right. <laughs> it was really uh, but I have to be honest that we really did pray like, oh man, I really hope this just, just kind of gives people a smile. I don't think we knew it was going to become an anchor <laughs> for people. Just that one thing that they were like, wait, this is what we, we wait for this every night, this song. And honestly, the way that it blessed my husband and I, um, to read comments, to feel like we were connecting with people in a time where everybody felt isolated and we could just kind of bring people into our home and just be ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I think the other thing was, you know, just a piano and a voice is how we started 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. And Bernie has become an incredible songwriter and producer for a bunch of artists. Yes. And he rarely sits down and just plays the piano anymore. And honestly, quarantine, he played the piano more during quarantine than he has in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was that stripping away of all the busy and getting back to that simple way that we started was really beautiful <laughs> for us even. So we're grateful it ministered to a lot of people, but it ministered to us too. <laughs> So we are here for a very special reason. You have a new album coming out this Friday. So yeah. No Stranger. And can I tell you, when listening to the title track, No Stranger, the line that you are no stranger to the scars, you have, you can have my broken heart, had me in tears when I first heard it. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I think this album is going to be one of those highlights for your career. Thank you. I, you know, I pray so. What's funny is, I didn't set out for that necessarily. And I wish that I could say that every time, right? Because as much as I try to submit to the Lord, striving, hoping, dreaming, kind of always finds its way into that creative process when you're like, okay, well, what's going to work, right? Okay, I got to get like, okay, we have our ballads. Now we need an up-tempo and what's radio going to want? And I can say with sincerity that for the probably the first time fully 
in my career, um, this record had nothing to do with that. In fact, we threw all of the rules, whatever those rules are, we threw them out the window. And that's because back in 2017, um, I had thyroid cancer and a lot of people know that and they followed my journey and they prayed for me and um, God did a miracle. I knew it was a cancer they were going to get out. I was going to be okay from the cancer, but the cancerous tumor was sitting on my vocal nerve. And so they had prepared me that, hey, we're going to get the cancer out, but you're probably never going to sing the same way again. You're not going to have the same vocal strength. You know, everything about your voice is going to change. And what God taught me from the moment that I heard those words to the moment that I actually knew that not only did he give me a miracle, but he actually brought my voice back stronger than it ever been. But the greatest miracle wasn't the voice part. The greatest miracle was what he did in the in-between. And that was, okay, you know what? Singing is not who you are. It's just what you do. Who you are is fully intact, even if your voice goes away. And that realization that my outcome does not determine God's goodness, mm -hmm. um, that was for me one of the greatest miracles he did was showing me that in real time, that he's still good and still faithful and still kind. And I think that, you know, I've, I've been walking with the Lord for more decades than I'm going to admit to you. But um, honestly, I know about the presence of God, right? I know about how he's always with us. And I know all those scriptures that he never leaves you and never forsakes you. But the difference between his omnipresence and his manifest presence, that his presence made known. I experienced his presence in the last few years in a, in a way I never have before, tangible, real, where you're like, wait, this is what it means. But it says he is with us. This is what this means. So we were trying to capture that, not just lyrically. We were trying to capture it sonically. I said to my husband, okay, the same way that this presence of God has brought us this new freedom, what does that not just look like lyrically? What does that sound like to you, Bernie? And he was like, well, we got to go to London and record the symphony. And we did. So even sonically, it's different. And I think that for us is the prayer, is that people would experience that manifest presence of God and that this music would kind of help take them to that place. Yeah. So what do you want when the listener sits down and listens to the project start to finish, which doesn't happen very often anymore <laughs> um, because of, of the way it's tragic. I know. I always think an album to tell a story and, and yeah. I think the, there's an importance in that, but what do you want when they sit down and listen to this from track one to track 10? What do you want them to take away? You know, I think that the title kind of says it all. That's why I chose it to be the title cut, that he has made himself known to us in a time. It's funny because this record was actually finished a, a while ago. Okay. And I, I kept wondering, like, why are we waiting? To, why, why, why? And then I got to 2020 and now we're in the middle of the season. And I'm like, Lord, you are always sovereign. So you knew that what you were teaching me in my night season of 2017, 2018 was going to come along in a lot of other people's night season in 2020. And um, I think that reminder in a moment where we've been isolated, in a moment where people feel misunderstood, in a moment where there's more division and toxicity in the air, I feel like, than there ever has been right. in any other time in my lifetime, not just because of a virus or a quarantine, but from a racial perspective, from a political perspective, just all the things. 2020 is all the things and the fact that if we can remember that not only is he not a stranger to us but we are not a stranger to him mm -hmm. that when he says i am with you lo i am with you even until the end of the age there's just something that like even just saying it right now i actually i well up with tears because i have a new understanding of what that means and so when somebody's listening to this music i want that to be more than anything else I want them to sense the presence of God he's with me he's not a stranger he calls me friend he calls me child and I think um, that if the music does that for someone then 
it'll have answered. <laughs> it'll answer all the prayers. <laughs> and can we take a minute to talk about something else that's very close to your heart, your project, Hope for Justice? Yeah, you know, so goodness, it was a long time ago now, hard to believe, but back in 2004, um, the Lord just, you know, I knew as an artist, every artist kind of has a cause, right? Or an organization they support or somebody that they take on tour. And right. I had never really kind of found my fit, right? I was like, I, I, all of these organizations are worthy and all of them have needs. So it's not like, you know, I didn't want to support it. It was just, I wanted to feel a personal connection. And I was watching Law and Order, which I never thought would change my life. <laughs> I love Law and Order SVU, but um, they were doing an episode on something called human trafficking. And in 2004, I had never even heard that term before. And just, you know, to make a long story short, um, God radically wrecked my life, uh, learning about a reality that slavery still exists, that there are more slaves in the world than at any other point in history, most of them children. I wasn't even a mom yet. Um, and yet I was thinking, these are someone's daughters and granddaughters and neighbor and just that realization. Um, I started an organization back in 2005 to kind of just help in the fight. And I didn't know what I was doing, didn't have a clue. I'm like, I'm just a creative that has a dream of helping. So it started out as that, like, okay, we're gonna raise money, we're gonna send it to this organization in India. I took a trip to India that changed my life. I saw kids for sale on the street. Um, you know, a little girl that couldn't have been more than six years of age in a cage. And you just see these things and you think, I'm never going to be like, this has wrecked me for life. But God really moved beyond that to show me, wait a second. Um, this is happening in Nashville where I live. This is happening in Seattle where I was born. This is happening in all the towns in America. And people have never heard of this. People don't even know that this is a real thing. Um, you fast forward now to 2020 and all of a sudden people are talking about this issue, which is incredible. Um, but another you know, another conversation for another day is the fact that you're like, okay, but let's make sure that when we're talking about this, it's not to be used as a deflection mm -hmm. from other issues that are equally as important. Uh, and we're using it like, okay, well, don't tell me about this when you're not even speaking for the children, right? You're like, yeah, but I've been speaking for the children since 2004. Mm -hmm. And some of you have heard me speak about it and you never had the rage that you have now. So I'm like, Lord, let this last. Let this be a moment in time where everyone is permanently marked to say, what can we do to make a difference? And Hope for Justice has grown now from something that was a dream to being you know, on every continent on the planet, 22 offices, and I think they helped over 100,000 kids last year. Mm -hmm. And just three days ago, um, they rescued uh, a girl in Nashville. And here was the part to me that I was like, do you see what's happening? It wasn't like the heroes that are busting down the doors and going in on the front lines. It was a person that is just a monthly supporter of Hope for Justice that had learned about what to look for, the signs to look for. And they saw that in someone in their neighborhood and they actually called the tip line. The FBI got involved and that person was rescued and reunited with their family and so you're like wait this is everyday people now that are learning about this issue and making a difference so the work is important and I believe that it's something that all of us have to make a priority yeah and if people want to find out more about hope for justice how where do they go yeah hopeforjustice.org easy <laughs> awesome. so I want to ask a couple of fun questions now ask yes <laughs> since you wrote eight of the ten songs on here <laughs> What is the favorite lyric or song you've ever written? Oh, wow. That's like trying to pick your favorite child. And honestly, I've got three daughters and there's so much drama that if I'm being honest on some days, it might be easier to pick my favorite child than my favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Hopefully they won't watch this. Kidding girls. Um, but, oh goodness. It's funny because in every season, that's one of the beautiful things about songwriting, right? Is that in every season, it's kind of like birthed out of something new that you're learning or experiencing. But if I had to pick, mm, probably Clean, a song called Clean. 
um, the chorus is, there's nothing too dirty that he can't make worthy. He washes in mercy and makes me clean. Probably if I had to, but you also mentioned my new favorite, which is, you are no stranger to the scar. So that's my, that's my new favorite. <laughs> okay. So take that question, turn it around. Is there a song or a lyric that you wish you had have written? Like the first time you heard it, you're like, oh my goodness, I wish that that had come from me. <laughs> uh, several. Um, of all time, probably It Is Well With My Soul. Mm -hmm. um, I, that's probably my favorite song of all time. But what's interesting, though, is that when you know the stories behind those hymns, the stories that led to the song, you're like, I don't want the circumstance. I don't want the story. I just want the lyric, Lord. Um, and then there's another lyric that I have just always loved. It's funny because it's just always moved me so deeply. And it's a song from Mercy Me called Word of God Speak. Mm -hmm. And um, still when I hear it, I just, my eyes well up with tears. And I think that actually is the key is the word of God and just the way that they creatively put that into a lyric. I, I love that song. <laughs> As we wrap up our interview, is there a message of hope that you want to leave with our CCM viewers? You know, I think that for me, um, the hope right now is that he is with us. And I think um, in a moment where you don't see it, I'm so grateful that who our God is, is not dependent on how we feel in the moment, that who he is, is steadfast, regardless of how we feel. I think it's just remembering to inform your feelings, inform your emotions, that your God is still steadfast and true, and that he is with us, that even when it feels like all is chaos, the world is upside down, he is with us and he will always be with us even till the end of the age. That's not hype to me. That's, that's real hope. So <laughs> yeah, I do think we sometimes have to inform our, our feelings of, yes, because that's our feeling doesn't mean that it's the truth. Yeah. I have to tell my feelings all the time. Like sometimes on, on the hour. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Natalie, thank you so much for stopping by CCM and talking to us today. Oh. And everybody, please go listen to this new album, <laughs> No Stranger, out this Friday. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>